Okay guys, if you have ever designed any steel structure, you know that if you use the I section as your beam, in that case, you need to check the web buckling of the I section. Okay, now what is web buckling? Why does it matter and why this actually happens? All these are the topic of today's video. Okay, so today's topic is web buckling in I section. And before studying this video, as usual, if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay. So, at the very first, for the beginners, what is the meaning of buckling? Okay. So, to discuss the buckling, we will consider any column. Okay. If you have any column which is subjected to any axial load, in that case, what will happen? This column will bend like this. Okay. And this is known as the buckling of column. And based on this buckling of column concept, we will discuss about the buckling of our web. Okay. And also, don't forget that if this is the cross section of this column and you apply this vertical or axial load, in that case, this column will buckle about the, yes, about this minor axis, not about this major axis okay so you have understood about the buckling okay buckling is nothing but bending of a column or any member when the member is subjected to axial load not transverse load got it okay now the question is why should we bother about the buckling of wave okay so we are not discussing about buckling of column but we are discussing about the buckling of web. Now the question is, why should we bother about this? Okay, so before discussing about why we should bother about buckling of web, let's understand about the function of any I section. You know, that if this I section is subjected to transverse load, not axial load, transverse load like this, point load or UDL load, in that case, there will be some bending moment within this I section. Got it? So, simply if this is the simply supported beam, if this is the loading like this, the bending moment diagram looks like this. Got it? So, due to this bending moment diagram, if we cut any particular section of this I beam, the stress distribution looks like this. Okay? And here you can see this is the flange of this I section and this is also the flag and maximum or the majority of the stresses are accumulated along these flanges that is why we consider that this flange carries the bending moment in the form of a tensile force and a compressive force okay so if the total bending moment is m we can say that if this lever arm is d in that case this tensile force T or compressive force C is nothing but the T or C is equals with M by D. Okay. Or you can say that moment carrying capacity is the tensile or compressive force time the lever arm. Okay. Now, if your web buckle like this, what will happen? The lever arm between the flange has been shortened. Okay. So, wave has buckled like this and this lever arm has been shortened. So, now D dashed is less than D. Okay. So, of course, now the moment carrying capacity is less than your previous moment carrying capacity. Why? The lever arm has been shortened. That is why we should bother about the wave buckling. So, you have designed this beam for M. Now, your wave has buckled and the capacity is only M dashed. What will happen? Your beam will collapse. Got it? Okay. So, you should think about the wave buckling. Now, let us discuss why does wave buckle? What is the mechanics behind this? Okay. So, to discuss about the mechanism about wave buckling, let us again consider this beam and this is the I section. Okay, this is the flange, this is the wave, this is the flange and this is one support, this is another support. Let us say you have some point load like this, 
okay so due to this two point load of course in this beam you will have some bending moment got it and if you cut any section again okay so you will have stress distribution like this okay the upper part is under compression and the lower part is under tension this is the neutral axis okay and the majority of the forces compressive forces is being transferred through this flange and the majority of the tensile force is also being transferred through this bottom flange okay now let's import all this compressive and tensile force to this section they are acting like this okay now what is the complementary forces of this compressive force as well as this tensile force the complementary force are acting like this okay so now you can see that this particular zone is under the action of a resultant tensile force like this and a resultant compressive force like this okay so this resultant compressive force is being applied within this wave part now simply separate this wave zone okay this is the separated wave zone and this is the support fixed support and this is another support here this is also fixed and this is the resultant compressive force here and this is the resultant compressive force acting here so now you can see this is simply acting like a column a very short column okay and whenever the cylinderness ratio is more of this column it will buckle okay so if the depth of this i section or the built up section is more definitely the length of this column is also going to be more and it will easily buckle because if we increase the cylinderness ratio you can see the yield stress reduces if the kl by r or the cylinderness ratio is increased the yield stress is reduced here you can see you can follow any table whether it is a uh, indian standard or eisc or any code okay so this is the basic if the cylinderness ratio or the effective length of this column increased it become more susceptible to buckling okay so this is all about the buckling of wave for an i section now what is the solution well i will not discuss about the solution in this video you can consider this as your homework you can let me know in the comment and if you do not know what is the solution also in that case please let me know i will discuss about that okay thanks for watching if you like this video don't forget to share it